This screencast pertains to the material in Module 6, Lesson 7, where we plot points and use them to draw lines in the plane, and describe patterns with the coordinate pairs by writing some expressions. Alright, so let's get started. Number one, it says complete the chart, then plot the points on the coordinate plane below. We'll complete this chart by looking at the X and the Y and just simply putting them into an ordered pair. This is quite simple. So 2 for X and 3 for Y becomes the ordered pair, 2 comma 3. And similarly here, and the last one. Now we need to plot the points on my coordinate plane here. So I have 0 for X and 1 for Y. I have 2 for X and I have 3 for Y. I have 4 for X and I have 5 for Y. I have 6 for X and I have 7 for Y. Now, I, I'm going to freehand this because I just can't seem to make a ruler work very well on my iPad. But I would expect my students to use a ruler and take pride in their work and do the best that they can. I'm going to do the best I can freehanding this. All right. So now we have this, and we're now asked to create a rule. And really, it's just as easy to look on our chart here as anything else. What do we notice for the pattern here? If I have 0 uh, for x, I have 1 for y. If I have 2 for x, I have 3 for y. In both cases, I am adding 1. Let's see if that pattern holds. 4 and 5, yep, 4 plus 1 is 5, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So what rule can we write? I could write y, get the right tool, y equals whatever x is plus 1. So y equals x plus 1. What other points could I find on this? Well, I could simply uh, go and I could look at the chart to find values, but I also could just apply the rule. So if x is 8, y must be 9. And if x is 10, the y must be 11 to follow this rule. And if we look on the chart, we will see, I think I've drawn it reasonably well. I have my 8, and indeed my y is 9. I have my 10, indeed my y is 11. Again, we need to do something similar with number 2. First, we need to complete the chart, and that, as we've seen in the previous slide, is very easy. I have 1 half, comma, 1. I have 1 and y of 2. I have 1 and a half and 3, and I have 2 and with a y of 4. Now I can plot these on my chart. So I have 1 half for x and 1 for y. That would go right there. I have 1 for x and I have 2 for y. I'll try to get these as accurately as I can. This uh, stylus has got a very thick uh, barrel here. And 1 and a half goes to 3. And we have 2 with 4. The one thing that I need to point out here is that whatever you do with the functions in this uh, module, in this topic, everything should go in a straight row. If it does not form a line, you have done something wrong. So let's look at the patterns here. Well, first, we've got to draw the, uh, the line in here. So again, doing my best freehand. All right. So what's my rule here? Well, I, I can look at this, and I could see, well, I have one half here, and I have one. How could I get from one half to one? I could add one half, right? So the rule could be x plus one half, and that would be one. I also could say it might be x times two, because two times one half is two halves, which is one. So we have two possibilities here. We either have x plus one half, or we have x times 2, which we re usually write as 2x. Well, let's look at the second pair here. Well, if I take the x and add 1 half, I'd get 1 and a half, not 2. So that's not going to work here. But if I take my 1 and I multiply it by 2, I get a 2. So the rule is 2 times x, or 2x. Does that work here? 
Well, one and a half is three halves, and I multiply that times two, and I get six halves, which is the same as three. Yes, so let's check the last one. Two times two is four, correct. All right, so my rule is y equals 2x, which means y equals 2 times x. Name some more points here. Well, I can start right here, right, with 0. If I have 0 for x, 2 times 0 is 0. So I have 0, 0, which means uh, this starts at the origin in this particular plane. And I could just grab another value. I'll say 3 and 6. Let's go check. Hopefully I've drawn this well enough. I got 3. And yep, it goes up to 6. A little crooked there at the end, but 3 and 6 is my ordered pair. So we need to check our hypothesis out using several of these examples. There may be one more than one possibility at your first glance, but if you test through all your ordered pairs, you should come up with the correct answer. Okay, so we have a fairly complex uh, set of lines here. It says give three points that are on line A. Okay, line A is this one right here. And you'll notice that throughout here, if we look at our ordered pairs, if I go up to here on line A and to here, we'll see that I have 14 and 14. If I go here I've got 20 and 20. No matter where we go on this one, I've got 10 and 10. We have the same values for x and y. So I could name any points, right, where my x and y have the same coordinates. So I can start with uh, 1 and 1, uh, 5 and 5, 10 and 10. What is the relationship that what describes the relationship between the x and y coordinates for the points on line A? Well, that's simple. y is the same as x, so y equals x. What do you notice about the y coordinates for every point on line B? Well, line B is right here. And the y coordinates are all the same because we have a line that is horizontal. So when we have a line that's perfectly horizontal, all the values for y are the same. We could estimate and eyeball this would be uh, 12, 14, 16, maybe around 17. Okay, what do I notice? That they are all the same. And I'm not going to write that down right now. And conversely, if we look at uh, C, we have a vertical line, and we can make some inferences about the value of x. So again, the answer for this is the y-coordinates are the same for every point on line B. Okay, for D, we're to fill in the missing coordinates for points on the line D. Let's look at line D right along here. So we'll find 12 for x. So we go here, and it intersects that line right at that point. And we go across to find our y-axis the value would be 6. We'll look at 6 for our x. Got a problem here. Line D. Okay, well, 6 doesn't go all the way, but if we take that and trace that line down all the way, we'll see that it intersects the x-axis. So the value for y for a point on the x-axis, it's always 0. Now we have y is 24, so we'll have to start with our y-axis, 24. And it doesn't quite make it all the way over there, but we can see it intersects right there. So what do we have for x? It's 24 and 30. 36. Whoa, this is off the charts here, isn't it? So we don't have 36, so we're going to have to look for a pattern here. We uh, can find that... 12 is half of 6. It's also 12 minus 6. So we can try those two hypotheses on the next one. Uh, 0 is not half of 6, so we have to try uh, x minus 6. x is 6, minus 6 is 0. That works. Try it here. 30 minus 6 is 24. 
So I need to apply the rule here even though it's no longer on the chart. So 36 minus 6 is 30. And the next one we have the y value here. Well, what's going to happen here? We're doing the inverse. What minus 6 equals 30? Well, we just saw that in the previous ordered pair here. 36 minus 6 equals 30. So when we do that, we could just simply look at our value for y and apply the rule inversely. So instead of adding, or rather subtracting 6, I added 6 to get back there. So when we go this way, we subtract 6. Okay, let's continue. All right, uh, for any point on line C, the x-coordinate is. Well, I referenced that briefly on the other slide here, uh, previous slide. Let's just get rid of that. Can't seem to do that. Going on, it's this line right here. It is a vertical line, so all the values of x are the same. Vertical lines are parallel to the y-axis. So I'm going to look here got 2, 4, 6. It's someplace between 4 and 6. Looks a little less than halfway. So I'm just going to put 4.9. Uh, any answer that's close to that should be acceptable unless your our, uh, grid is more detailed. Our final task here is to look at this and each point lies on at least one of the lines in the plane above. Identify a line that contains each of the following points. Well, 1 is done for us, or uh, the Roman numeral 1, if we're not familiar with those, and 7, 7. So I have 1, 2, 3, that's 6. Halfway there is 7 and 7. So you can see that that's on line A. Let's go on to 2. I'm going to find my point first. I'm going to go with 14 and 8. So it's along this line, 14. And 8. It intersects right there. I'm actually going to write that in. 14 and 8. We can see that that's on line D. 3. 5 and 10. So I'm going to go to 5. I guess that's what they intended this to be 5. I wrote 4.9 in the previous slide. You can see it's a little bit off to the side. 5 and 10. Well, we have a choice here, right? It, it could be either uh, E or C. It's on both lines. And again, in the previous slide, I uh, said that that was 5 or 4.9. You can see where I identified that as being a little bit off to the side, but uh, uh, that's that'll work. 0 and 17. Okay, 0 means for x means that it's on the y axis. So this is 10, 12, 16, 18. There we go, 17 is on line B. 15 and 3 tenths and 9 and 3 tenths. So this one's going to be a little bit difficult because uh, we have the scale or the intervals going two units and we're now talking about tenths of units. But we know that 15 is going to be between 14 and 16. I'm going to go up around here. Okay. Well, that's the only one it could be, because that's 9 and 3 tenths would be about there. So, once again, we are on line D. Finally, 20 and 40. We can see here that we don't have a scale going to 40. But let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So I have 20. It's going to continue up above this all the way up to 40. It only goes up to 30. Well, there's only one line that's going to intersect that 20 above the 30, and that would be line E.